we're continuing the topic of differentiation. We're going to talk about product rule of differentiation today. Okay, so product rule of differentiation says that if you have to differentiate not just fx, but fx times gx, then the rule for differentiating that is you derivate fx and multiply gx with it. Then you write plus, and then you write fx as it is, and multiply g prime x with it. Let's understand this using examples. The first example is that y equals x square sine x. So these are two functions. X squared would be fx and sine x should be gx. Okay, so we have to differentiate that. So then dy over dx would be, okay, so first we have to derivate the first function. So x squared will be derivated and it will change into 2x. And then you multiply the second function without changing it then a plus sign, then you write the first function without changing it, x squared, and now with that, you multiply the derivative of the second function, which is cos x. So the answer would be 2x sine x plus x squared cos x. This would be the answer. Two x sine x plus x squared plus x. All right. Any questions here? All right. Next up is x cube y equals x cube e power 5x. So let's apply product rule on this. So I'm going to derivate x cube, which is going to be 3x squared, finding dy over dx equals, okay. And e power 5x remains the same. Then plus, now x cube remains the same. And we derivate e power 5x, which we know is e power 5x times 5. So we get 3x squared e power 5x plus 5x cubed e power 5x. Next is y equals bracket 6x minus 1 times ln x cubed plus 5x. Okay, apply product rule on this. So 6x minus 1 gets derivated first. That would give us 6. And the second function remains the same. ln x cubed plus 5x. Okay. Plus sign. 
Now the first function remains the same, 6x minus 1 times the derivative of ln x cubed plus 5x, which is, we just write down the formula for that, ln fx when derivated becomes 1 upon fx times f prime x. So that would give us 1 upon x cubed plus 5x and then in brackets we have to derivate x cubed plus 5x again which is going to give us 3x squared plus 5. So we have 6ln x cubed plus 5x plus 6x six minus 1 3x squared plus 5 upon x cubed plus 5x. Next is, any questions so far, guys? Next up is, find the equation of tangent to the curve. the curve y equals x square root x minus 1 at the point five comma ten. Find the equation of tangent to the curve y equals x square root x minus 1 at the point 5. Okay. So we know how to find the equation of tangent. It's y equals mx plus c. And we know how to find m. We derivate this given e equation and then substitute 5 in it to get the slope. Okay. So let's derivate y. So again, we have two functions. This function times this. So we apply the product rule. So derivative of x is 1. And then the second function just gets multiplied with 1. Plus sign. The first function is just x. Derive the second function. The second function is x minus 1 whole power half. Square root is power half. Power comes down. And x minus 1 powers becomes 1 less. So half minus 1 is minus half. And then you need to derivate x minus 1 again. But that's just 1. So times 1, write it or don't write it. So I'm getting dy over dx is coming out to be square root x minus 1 plus x in the numerator, 2 in the denominator, and I'm writing the square root in the denominator, x minus 1. Okay, I have to find slope from here. So I can substitute 5 in place of x. So I get square root 5 minus 1 plus 5 upon 2 times 5 minus 1. So that would give us 13 by 4. So the slope or the gradient of the tangent is 13 by 5. Okay. It's going to be y equals m, which is 13 by 4, x plus c. So x is 5 y is 10.
so 10 equals 13 by 4 times 5 plus c which gives us c equals 25 by 4 so y equals m x minus 25 by 4 If okay. question, hai to please ask Exactly the same concept as AS. You've already found, you already know how to find equation of tangent. The only difference is that the question given, the equation given would require you to find the product rule in order to, okay? would require you to use the product rule in order to differentiate it. Yeah. Okay. Next question is, find the coordinates of the stationary point. of stationary point I'm writing SP. Let me just open a new board. So find the coordinates of the stationary points of the curve y equals square root of x times x minus 4 power 4. Let me just confirm. Yes, all right. We have to find the coordinates of stationary point of this curve. So for stationary point, we know we have to derivate this and equate it to 0. And to derivate this, we will be using the product rule. So let's start with the derivation. dy over dx will be differentiate x power half first, which is going to be half x and half minus one would be minus half. The second function will stay the same. It will get multiplied. Plus, First function stays the same times derivative the second function, we get 4 outside x minus 4 power 3 times the derivative of x minus 4, which is 1. So we get half, uh, I'm writing x power minus half as square root of x in the denominator. And in the numerator, we have x minus 4 power 4. Then plus, we have 4 square root of x, then x minus 4 q, and when, then we equate it to 0. Okay. Now we have to find the value of x. So I'm going to take... LCM first, so to change it into a single fraction, it's going to be x minus 4 power 4 plus 2 and 4 gets multiplied, it becomes 8 and square root of 8, uh, square root of x and square root of x gets multiplied, it becomes x and then x minus 4 whole cube and I can write 2 square root of 2 here and equate 2 square root of x equals to 0. First step, take LC. I hope you know that 2 square root of x times 4 square root of x is 
4 times 2 is 8. And square root of x times square root of x is just x. So that's where we got the 8x form. Now the denominator will go to the other side, get multiplied with 0 and get eliminated. So I'm just removing that from the picture. OK. Now take x minus 4 whole power 3 common. And in the bracket, we have 1 plus 8x equals to 0. So we're getting x minus 4 power q equals to 0. From here, we're getting, take cube root on both sides, we get x minus 4 is equals to 0, and we're getting x equals to 4. From the other one, we're getting x equals minus 1 upon 8. Hold on, I think the other answer should have been 4 over 9. Why is mine different? Did I miss? X minus four two. I'm trying to look here. Four you want to say power four three and we took power three common. So, Bara Bolo, maybe. plus eight x beside. You keep power x minus four key four three or hum a cube you have common liar. Hmm, exactly. Yeah, thank you. Yes, that is it. So, यहाँ से x minus 4 whole cube common लिया था, so yeah, inside we should have x minus 4. Okay, thank you. So we have to fix the second bracket. The second bracket is okay. So it becomes x minus 4 plus 8x equals to zero which is 9x minus 4 equals to 0, which is 9x equals 4 upon, uh, x equals 4 upon 9. Yes. That is, yes, what's written in the answers. 4 upon 9. Okay, thank you, Mary. All right. So we have to find the coordinates of the stationary points. We also need y. So when x is 4, substitute this here in the original curve, and when x is 4 over 9, Substitute it in the original curve and we get when x is 4, we will get 0. And when x is 4 over 9, we will get 106.55. Let me see what do we get in fractions. Hold on. So square root 4 upon 9 times. Bracket 4 over 9 minus 4 power 4, which is coming out as a decimal. So it is y equals 106.546. So correct to three significant figures is just 107. This is it, it's not rounded off. So the uh, coordinates of the stationary points are 4 over 9, comma, uh, 107 basically a temple through the instructions of the paper. Non-exact answer has to be rounded to 360. All right. That was all about the product rule.
now we can discuss the quotient rule of differentiation. Quotient law. Product rule is related to multiplication of two functions. Quotient rule is related to deriving fx upon gx. So the rule for that is you derivate f prime x and you derivate fx and write gx with it. Then comes a negative sign this time. And you write fx and times the derivative of gx divided by whole square of the function in the denominator. That's the portion law. Sample would be y equals sine x upon x. So let's start by derivating sine x, which is cos x, then write gx without changing it, just multiply a negative sign, write the numerator function sine x, and then the deri derivate the denominator function. So derivative of sine, uh, sorry, derivative of x is just one divided by denominator square, which is x squared. So we have x cos x minus sine x upon x squared. Another one. Y equals X upon cos X. Okay, so the derivative of that is going to be dy over dx equals, should have written dy over dx here as well. Okay, so dy over dx would be x, derivative x, which is 1. Then multiply the lower function with that, cos x minus sign, keep x times, Derivate the denominator function, which is going to be minus sine x upon cos square x in the denominator. So we have cos x plus x sine x upon cos square x. Another one. Y equals X plus one in the numerator and the denominator has square root one minus four. Okay, I'm going to give you guys Three, four minutes to do this on your own. Sab idhar hai, other hai in fuzzy. I know Marine is here. Yahi ho? Yeah. Fuzzy, idhar ho? Question karo ye. Yes, miss. Okay, isko try karo ko.
I'll write the answer in the end, not right now. 